Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm Chris. This is Annie. And I'm Brooke. And this week we're going to be talking about swim run training tools. We're talking about stuff for swimming, stuff for uh, land-based stuff, running, everything. Strength. Everything to make you an overall better yes. athlete Yes. Person. Do, you, do you want to improve your swim run performance? Yes, you do. No better time than the present. Yeah. Then keep listening. We have a show for you. <laughs> That's what we're here this for. Show. But before we get into all this meaty stuff, does anyone have any gear updates? I have a gear update. Hear it. I dropped a lot of hate <gasps> on the Hoka's early on. <gasps> you sure did. Oh my goodness. Oh yep. my gosh. Hold on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Brooks eating them words. <laughs> um yeah, I've come around to them. I will not say that I love them as much as I love my Innovates, which are kind of more a minimal issue, but I've been running, I've been alternating um, to kind of work out some injury kinks, and I'm really liking them as an alternative. And I feel like they give me kind of a different um, cadence and like a different type of run that allows me to strengthen parts of my hip that I haven't been using with my other shoes. That's so good. I feel like they're really good injury prevention, which Annie talked about with her research rundown on preventing running injuries. Which ones did so you get? I'm a fan of the Hoka speed goats. Yes. Oh, yeah. Not nice. for long distances. I won't wear them on first swim run yet, but for training Baby stuff. for sure. I was expecting you to say a change your outlook on life, but it was, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it kind of did. <laughs> did Chipper, didn't it, you? It, it made me realize that, that I can be Chipper wrong about Hoka things. To get a Hoka tattoo. That's I, huge. I can't remember that. Well, uh, I'm sure some super fan will go back and trim, trim that <laughs> bet from the from the clip. Uh, well, I'm happy to hear about the the speed goats. I do love very much the speed goats. I, after a rather chilly experience, now I'm not claiming to be swimming with the likes of the Swarmon Labs ladies. Yeah, no, their, no one, no one thinks you are. I, <laughs> I, I like that you made that assumption, though, Chip. <laughs> well, I just want to level set. With I like everyone. your confidence. <laughs> uh, being a California kid through and through, when it when the weather gets into the 40s, it's a little bit nippy for me. And there was at the pool one morning that Chris and I were out there. It was 28 degrees. It was bad. It was a little rainy and a little windy. And and when I got home, I ordered myself a Red's original dry robe style yes! swim jacket. It's yes. nice, and I'm and I'm loving it. Do you just wear it all? Like I wear it all the time, like around the house. I did, and I was I did a run on the treadmill, and then I went outside when it was cold, and I put the jacket on. It was nice, and it was like, oh, this is great. And my wife's in the garage, hanging out, and she grabbed the th- the jacket too. She's like, oh, this is nice. I'm like, see why I needed this for so long. Yeah, need needs need. is a strong word, but it it is very nice. <laughs> I did opt, Brooke, al- almost solely based on your recommendation. I opted for kind of the 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 short quote unquote short sleeve, which is more like a three quarter kind of half. Yeah, put you half in the forearm, pretty much. Yeah, and it's easy to like pop your arms in to change. Yeah, I don't know, and the way that the red one does it, they just have like the sizes based on how tall you are, not how big you are. And I was, mm. I mean, it's, it was like five eleven to six foot five or something. And I'm six foot. So I was like, okay, I'm this one. I'm not the five, four to five mm-hmm. ten version, but it is, it's big. Yeah. There's, but I know there's, that's uh, how it's supposed to be, but it's almost like, I feel like a Jedi or something. Yeah. There's a lot of room for Santa Claus to be in there. You know, it's like, yeah, there's a lot of space. Totally. I hang mine up on these little hooks at the end of our lanes at the pool. And everybody else swimming with me thinks there's a person like standing over them <laughs> on the swim. Yeah, it's like a it's a presence like Yoda without Yoda. <laughs> it's a presence, yeah. So I've been enjoying that. I think I need to give it a proper break in with a polar bear style skin yes. swim, you or just a, so. a new dog walk. <laughs> oh. I don't know if that's a proper break in. <laughs> I don't that's know if my jacket would feel that's a. The type of break-in it's looking for. That's probably if you want to break in like like a criminal record or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Break in my rap right? sheet on the watch. <laughs> yeah. All right. Make make your debut on next door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love reading the next doors. 
<laughs> Moving, Moving on. Moving on. No more do new dog walking jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, enough of that. Let's talk about swim run training tools. Okay. So I think we should set the stage of why we're even talking about this. This is a gear show, so we are going to be talking about specific pieces of gear that you can use to enhance your performance and stuff like that. But we thought it'd be good to take kind of a big picture look, and we're going to rely on actually smart people from the Swimmer Labs to kind of like tee it up for us as to why this is something that you should I love think how about. you guys always classify us as the smart people on the show. Um, you You're are really like, the scientists. Yeah. Which is a little misrepresented. You guys are the, quote, labs. <laughs> we all have different intelligences. <laughs> yes. We all bring different strengths. Well, you guys are called strength. labs. So, yeah, the labs. Why are we doing this? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good question. It is the off season technically. But technically, we do have a season coming up to train for. So Woo-hoo! we're sort of still in this zone where we, the horizon of the race calendar is far enough off that it's still sort of like build your base, mm-hmm. build the chinks in your armor, just prepare to come back stronger than you were at the last end of last swim run season, or prepare to kind of bulletproof yourself for the upcoming rigors of in a, of a training plan that's race oriented or just prepare for your first swim run everything yeah. in between yeah so i think one one good area to kind of kind of focus on is if you're brand new to endurance training or training aids i think uh there's no one silver bullet thing that you can get that will solve all your problems but yep. if you no shortcuts I think a good place to start is potentially training with some level of metrics, either if that's a heart rate monitor or a, a heart rate number or kind of a perceived rate of exertion. Now, why don't we go into those two things for two minutes? Rate of perceived exertion is just kind of a subjective measure on how much effort you're putting into um, an activity. And usually you do it on like a one to 10 scale. And you can also kind of measure it based on um, like if you're running, you know, a one to a three, you can breathe easily, have a conversation. Um, it's very comfortable. And that would be kind of associated to like a warm up or low aerobic um, heart rate zone. Um, if you are going into like a four to a six or getting moderate, you can hold kind of short conversations. Um, and then you're getting more into your aerobic zone. And then I would say anything above a seven, um, you're getting into kind of your, uh, upper eighties, like, ana- like getting into anaerobic, um, or sub anaerobic threshold. And it's very difficult to hold a conversation or even speak a sentence. So anyways, you can look online. There's a lot of like great charts that kind of tell you what rate of perceived exertion is, but they all correspond to like a a training zone. You guys want to hear a funny story? That was a great explanation, I think. I think that was great. Um, So when I was a sort of serious athlete, um, I was really big into perceived effort and I knew I was cycling in zone two when I could sing uh, Tony Braxton's Unbreak My Heart. Like, that was, that was like my zone two song. That's a hard song, Chris. And that, and that, you got to hold some long notes. Well, that would be my test. If I couldn't sing that song, I knew I was, like, above where I wanted to be zone two for a race. I need to look up this song. Great. Look no farther. Forget about those charts. That is, that's that, the metric. That's your hey, metric. If there's a song yeah. you can sing while, you know, zone two, it's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a that's a really good way to kind of, break it down too it's like oh yeah your sort of zone effort one through three you could do that all day that you can go yeah walk and, and you could sing day. anything and by you tony, can sing Ber- yeah. tony early 90s ballad yeah <laughs> pat benatar like love is a battle those you can yeah those you can sing in zones one two and, and three if you're in that eight nine ten you're you can't even think, let alone really speak beyond a yes or a no. You're maybe doing like, you're maybe doing, um, what's the new kind of like rap style where it's just like short bursts of rhymey songs. Trap music. Rhymey words. Trap. Yes. You're doing trap maybe in like zone seven and eight. And 10, you're, you're collapsing. Ten, after, yeah. you know. I think 10 is just <laughs> You're doing that part of the salt and pepper song that goes, ha, ha, just beat it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that reference is unbeatable. Wow. <laughs> that, that was special. Should that, we just end the show? Yeah, I think that's like just... line of the day right there, Annie. Congratulations <laughs> on that. 
And for anybody <laughs> under the age of 30, so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody under the age of 30, Google it's this. salt and pepper, not yeah, salt and pepper. Yeah. So. <laughs> So if you have a sense around heart, what your heart rate kind of zones are in this methodology of kind of zone-based, heart rate-based training and perceived effort, they're all similar in, in nature. They're not exactly a one-to-one -one match, but they're generally similar about that. And so that's like a great place to start. And so if you don't have a watch or a heart rate monitor or any of those zones, spend some time figuring that out. And then now we're going to kind of go into like, what are some tools for strength to, if you want to look to build your strength up in the off mm -hmm. season or this, this time of year or, or any time really. So what's some kind of training tools that each of us are using for strength Then we'll hit the run. And then probably where we feel the most toys are toy heavy is, yeah. is the pool. Yeah. And I, and I would say, or you know, a, something that's sort of, a, you know, a shadow over this entire thing is like, you should have a plan, right? Like, if you mm -hmm. want to improve something, yeah, you can know what your heart rate is and stuff. But, like, have a plan, get a coach, look at stuff online. Like, if you're trying to improve something where you're deficient in the sport, um, speaking for myself, I'm using, I'm working with a swim coach now because I feel like that's where I need the most improvement in swim run. Um, and I'm just, you know, doing it with purpose, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of like that episode that you guys had where someone uh, recommended when you go out for a swim run, don't just go out for a swim run, but have like a training focus. Mm -hmm. Like maybe it's your transitions, mm -hmm. maybe it's your run, maybe it's your nutrition. I'd say the same for any training session. Like, you know, is your, is your focus building base and volume? Is your focus on a lot body alignment? Great... Is it on shoulder strength? Yep. And like really pick a thing to target. Absolutely. And if this is your first swim run, it is told, or if you're if you're new to the sport, it's also totally okay for your focus to be practice swimming a longer distance than I did last time, yep. or mm -hmm. practice running. Yeah. You know, it's Absolutely. it can be as simple as that as I, as I'm just spending time in this discipline. Mm -hmm. But when you're ready to add that complexity, there is a there is a pretty significant benefit to having your your clear purpose yep. for each session. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I mean your purpose for that session would be. Hey, I want to go from swimming five minutes consecutive to seven or to 10 or whatever. Yeah, like that's, great. that's kind of your focus there. So that is a goal. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Great points. Yeah. So let's, so let's start with strength. Okay. So, and, and there might be stuff that carries over, right? So I think one thing for strength, obviously having a strong core and all that stuff is really important just to stay healthy and, you know, stay strong and everything. Um, working on mobility is important, but in terms of tools, one thing that kind of goes across swimming and strength in general is um, sort of stretch bands or, or, or bands. Or, yep, swim, bands swim or swim or whatever, cords, yeah. um, something that you can use to kind of work on your mobility, but also kind of develop some of the technique for swimming. And then, you know, you can use it for stretching your gluteus minimus or whatever medius. I don't, I don't, I'm see now I'm trying to sound like uh -oh. this. Nice, nice, nice job. <laughs> Chris trying to step in the lab. I know. Just now. I, I just stepped out. Welcome to the lab. Welcome to the lab. And goodbye. Your first test is how many glutes are there? And I'm just here fogging up the glass. There's uh there's two, right? There's the glute medius and then the maximus. Well, two per leg. And and uh minimus. Is there a minimus? You got it. Three of them. I don't know. That's all I got. I, Welcome to the lab. I, but you're yeah. right. Like bands, bands are super versatile. And um, yeah, I think a TheraBand, you can do a million things with it. Annie's got some great videos on swim run labs on different uh, band exercises for lower body um, and upper and shoulders. I like that dance one, Annie. We'll be sure to Oh, like yeah. Those. I mean, it can be fun, guys. Um, I think that the main thing to consider with any sort of strength training, core training, non-running based or non-swimming based training mm -hmm. is the importance of the, the benefit of that kind of training is that it's exposing your body to more resistance than you could generate just with On your own. own body. So considering that external factor of like, if you can manage your body and your body weight and the resistance it creates in the water and the impact forces it creates on land, that is awesome. That's a great baseline, but to really become a robust athlete, resistant to injury, um, and kind of push it, pushing the, the performance outcomes a little bit more, exposing yourself to external 
loads, such as the resistance of an elastic band or simply just heavy stuff. Like Mm -hmm. I think we, some strength training can sound really complicated, but it could just be as simple as putting, you know, 15 pounds of water bottles in your backpack and doing stairs or something like that. But some kind of weight or resistance more than you can just generate with your own little self. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think that's a really key point is you don't have to go out and I, yeah, when some people say, oh yeah, strength training, you think, oh, I got a big, uh, you know, bench press thing in my garage and a rack yeah, with right. thousands of pounds of weights and plates all over like you're at Gold's Gym in the late 80s or you're something. like at the CrossFit Games. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, you can just... Listening to Tony Braxton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could just, uh, yeah, you could fill a backpack up with books. You can, you know, do stuff with body weight uh, or, you know, honestly, carry your, carry your, your significant other up a mountain. I have done your child or your dog. so many workouts with my kids on my back, like doing yes, an air chipper. squat with. That is such functional strength. Yeah. Training. That's yeah. awesome. And it's also a, a strength and yeah. Um, and, and I think, building. you know, this is way back machine, but episode 17 of the show, we had like sort of world famous strength Rain coach. Man. I know. Uh, I, I looked it up. Um, Nate Helming. Um, on the show, who was my coach for a really long time. Um, yeah, and, and that, that episode is just jam-packed with things that you can do Lots to, of good nuggets in there. to kind of work on sort of the foundations of strength, which is, you know, strong core, okay, activating so- posterior chain. And I think, um, like, Annie, you brought up kind of the framing of, like, just think of what external load you can put on your body. I think another way of looking at it, too, for, for me in particular, just with, like, the type of weaknesses or chinks in my armor that I've been trying to deal with is what external instability can I provide that my body has to stabilize. Mm -hmm. So a big like tool for me has been like BOSU balls Mm -hmm. Um, and doing like a lot of single leg stuff on BOSU balls for hip stability, for trail running, for that unpredictable, you know, terrain. And then not only for lower extremity, but like for upper extremity, like um, having unstable surfaces for like push-ups or planks, um, those muscles that that works around the shoulder blade and the shoulder girdle are the exact muscles you need to prevent injury for swimming. So um, I I love doing stuff on wobbly surfaces. Yeah. Nice. Which can be as as fancy as a bosu ball or as simple as like a stack of three pillows yeah, yeah. The cou- couch cushions work great because they're like pretty thick you know we wouldn't recommend cactuses don't do it, yeah, not <laughs> don't do it. what okay um, any anything else <laughs> on strength i in terms so of you like use stuff? the bands you have a i i have i have the bands bands and body weight yeah kind of core are you talking well. about stretch cords Chipper? Yes, the stretch cords, like, they actually have paddles built into the end of yeah, the handle. I, yeah, I just recently got those, and they are awesome. And they're on sale right now oh. at Swim Outlet for 38 bucks. Wow. Nice. We'll link to that. That will be in the description if someone wants to but grab it's, that. But that specificity of having the paddle attached to this basically long, stretchy cord, as the name implies, yeah. is that is the element that makes these superior. Definitely. The band. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, if if I'm plugging my coach at Tower Twenty Six, um, that's like a key for every workout. Is you don't do anything unless you're doing stretch cords first, just to get like your muscle memory going, everything activated, makes you swim better in the water, better for beginning races and stuff like that. So now it's like my routine. I keep them in the car. I like strap them into like the hook on the back and just do them before I go into the pool. Nice. And it's a really, I think it's a really kind of, it's a little bit more advanced, obviously, but before a race or before a swim, if you don't have time to do a, a warm up swim, having those cords that you can do three minutes of dry land work and like get a mm-hmm. good amount of blood circulating in there could, could really kind of help. So, uh, yeah. And then you can jump in the pool and get right into your workout because you might only have a 45 minute time slot. Yep. Great. Great point. Or, and heaven forbid, I mean, this has been such a reality this year. You, if people still don't have access to pools, the stretch cords actually provide Is a pretty workout. swim specific workout. Yeah. Right? And they're, I, yeah, you could, I've seen people kind of lay down in between chairs and have it. So, so where you're actually horizontal and you're doing the movement of what your, mm-hmm. you know, what your catch would be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they have it pretty sophisticated. Basically, it's like a, you know, a, a makeshift Vaza trainer. 
Yeah, essentially. And on your recovery, you're getting that like eccentric control, like that slow. You're kind of oh, yeah. acceleration, the resistance, kind of? or just yeah, like exactly. the opposite of the you. No, like oh. on the recovery phase, it's still pulling you, and you're yeah. having. Oh, I think you said acceleration. Still yeah, resistance acceleration. Wonder. Oh, right, but it's not normal resistance that you that's get right not normal okay. resistance for swimming but that's really good muscle training yeah yeah because in swimming you don't have any because when you go to get your catch mm-hmm. you're just right. kind of flopping you're it throwing over. that big old big old stiff arm over the top smacking it in the water <laughs> okay cool let's move on to to running yeah so like what gear uh, or what tools are good Running's for running tough <laughs> I, I mean think, gotta uh, have shoes yeah <laughs> i think you know it, it might sound elementary potentially but if for some reason you've only been running on the road getting a pair of trail shoes to go run in the trails i think is a really trails and when i say trails i kind of mean trails and hills and a varied Mm -hmm. terrain that isn't a flat sidewalk or a pavement and that uh similar to kind of what brooke is saying earlier about training with that boso ball is that provides and makes those little supporting muscles stabilize and you're going to build a lot of strength just kind of running hills so. i mean yeah just varying your terrain just like you want to yep. vary your shoes so you don't get some sort of over and your training injury. you know we don't every day is not as hard as you can go and every day is not a recovery sure, sure. yeah i mean so, that that's all part of like sort of having a plan general. and stuff yep. right but yeah, yeah i totally agree with that i think if if this isn't your first swim run and you're actually paying attention to whatever your a race might be like let's say it's something like catalina which is definitely on our list later this year or orcas, or orcas of course. um you know understanding that there's going to be a lot of climbing um, now is a good time to develop sort of that, uh, start flexing that muscle a little bit, develop your climbing legs, your maybe power hiking. If you haven't done that, like all those and things. your downhill oh, control yeah, legs. Definitely. Yep. So, yeah, I think just the same thing that Annie said, like loading up a ba- loading up your running backpack with a little bit heavier weight, you know, if even just 15 pounds more, I, I was at my PT appointment and I got in one of those like gravity eliminated treadmills, you know, and they took 15 pounds of my weight off and I started running and I was like, oh my God, like, is this what it would feel like if I was 15 pounds lighter? It was crazy, crazy, the difference that that small amount of weight is. And so if you add 15 pounds and just go for, you know, six mile or whatever, you're a long run. Imagine or a hike, what it would feel like right. when you take that off, you know? I mean, I feel like I'm plugging a lot of our former shows, but episode 30 with, you know, also <laughs> world-famous coach Maru Faroli, one of his things... What minute What minute was this mentioned at, I don't, Chris? I'm not sure, but um, but what one of the things he mentioned is like, yeah, speed work is always really good, but one way to do speed work where there's less ris- risk of injury is hills. Like hill totally. work essentially mm-hmm. replaces being able to go to a track and just trying to pull a hammy or something because you're forced to go slower because it's steep. But mm-hmm. you still kind of still have to pump your arms and pump your legs and stuff. And I think a lot of people kind of get maybe, I mean, personally, I know I get intimidated sometimes about hills. Is like, I can't run this whole thing in one shot, and I that's okay. Uh, I think a good way is like, hey, let's just hike it, or let's run for 30 seconds, hike for a minute, run for 30, or you can break up these different intervals, but don't sure. be intimidated to mix it up just because you can't necessarily complete it at what you think your effort should be or, or whatever. Yeah. That's sort of how the strength and the progression is going to happen is like, hey, on day one, yeah, you probably couldn't run the whole hill, but at the end of whatever sure. time. Yeah, and power hiking, you can go, yeah. I mean, you can go pretty fast if you're a good power hiker. I mean, as long as you're hiking with purpose and not just, you know, kind of like what we were doing at Catalina on that big climb, we're just like, oh, man, this is a super long Look climb. At this you view. know, <laughs> instead of just like, you know, head down or whatever, anyway. And that's where like rate of perceived exertion comes in handy because mm-hmm. it's not about speed. It's about how hard you're working. Right. And so you can work at a max effort, you know, at a 10 out of 10 up going up a hill slowly, depending on the steepness of the hill, just like you could if you were sprinting all out. Yeah. yeah. So Great hills, point. hills is a running tool. For sure. And also external load. And if you combine the two, that is like a very powerful training tool. Yeah, and I would a, yeah. like a, for example a a common I I don't know not common maybe like weekly or biweekly winter workout at our house is um, we fill a backpack with water bottles that are full of water so you're adding you know between fifteen and however many pounds you possibly could want to add to your backpack 
And then power hike, we have this great climb, this like 2000 foot climb. So power hike to the top of the nice. trail. And then you pour all the water out, drink some of it, and then run down. And you're working on like your um, dynamic stability, um, your trail navigation, and you're not hammering your knees by running downhill with 30 pounds in your backpack. Smart. It's it's a great staple for, you know, maybe when weather prohibits road running or if you have if you are doing family time, you can hit the trails with your family and still load up your pack and just kind of Yeah, you know, so one, one, one thing I'll throw out there for our, like six listeners in Florida where it's like super flat, find a bridge. Hmm. You can always use you know, if there's a bridge nearby, bridges are typically usually hills of some steep? kind, you know. So, yeah, so, they, they so, so you can up. find a way you can find a way to do the work if if you really need to that's and I, I think mixing in the family time i will always take the opportunity on a hike to volunteer to carry the whatever kid wants to be carried because we have one of those you know kind of like uh kid backpacks that they ride in and that's a great external load plus you're mm-hmm. like the snack van and they're like yelling in your stuff. ear so then you have that external motivation to move fast. <laughs> faster yeah <clears throat> for my son, if I stop, he starts yelling. He'll just keep going. Just like, keep constantly. Going. He's like, you're weak, dad. Yeah. You're weak. He like, starts pulling my hair. I was like, damn, oh, this is like ratatouille or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I think now let's get into swim where all the, all the, most of the, toys, the toys, you know, everyone's got their swim bag yeah. full of everything. So let's dive yeah. into the swim section Ooh. here. So, so I had, I had that little bit of structure for this because there's so many more toys for swimming. So subcategories. I, yeah, subcategories. So it's like, all right, these are kind of like your essentials to work on skills and stuff. Then there's like the nice to haves and then there's sort of baller status. So we're we'll just kind of cover each kind yeah. of in turn. Um so yeah, so I think for essentials you're talking, you want to have a pool buoy, you want to have paddles, you want to have an ankle strap, um, you want to have a snorkel. Um, and like we've been mentioning, you know, a plan, some sort of swim plan, whether it's like, oh, I'm gonna try to you know, just have some structure to it. Don't just be like, I'm just going to free swim for 30 minutes and, you know, get out. Totally. So pull buoy and paddles, I think everyone probably has decent familiarity with on a swim run show. But, you know, why would you want to use a snorkel or or what's the ankle band? Uh, I think it's two areas that might be good to, to kind of talk about. But we've, we've mentioned the smart snorkel before, and I think certain people are more familiar with it than others because it is kind of an unusual thing you think oh well that doesn't make any sense because it's not super common you don't see that many at the pool i certain people are familiar with it that's you chip i'm the only well i guess chris and i (laughs) know i saw a guy i saw a guy swim this morning with a snorkel yeah but i have another well let's hear about how you use the snorkel chip and then i think there's also another way to get around that. Chris, do you also use a snorkel I, in your training? I started to, um, I've had one for a while, but I never liked it and I still don't like it. But <laughs> part of the, you know, sort of Tower 26 coaching philosophy is um, keeping your, being able to keep your head straight is really good for working on alignment and tautness um, for mm-hmm. your drills. So it's, so it's used heavily in drills with usually with a pool buoy and ankle strap um, or fins if you're just working on sort of alignment. So, yes. So mostly, Basically, it takes one part of the complexity of of what swimming is, you know, breathing, arm, catch, entering the water, kicking, alignment, all this stuff, flotation. And it takes one part of that, which is breathing, which is fairly important for your continuing on as a human. Someone just stepped into the labs. Watch out, people. (laughs) Oxygen, key for life. And uh, (laughs) more nuggets like this soon. So pay, pay attention, everybody. I'm listening. <laughs> no, notepad out and everything. Forgot where I was going with this whole thing. <laughs> no, the reason, the reason why I was like, "Oh, hey, look, I, I you're just, on chip." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you were talking about um, it helps you focus alignment. on yeah. alignment. I, I notice I will use the snorkel for maybe I would say max four to six hundred every swim set. Usually in the beginning, after kind of a warm up, and I feel it really helps me not worry about my breathing, obviously, and really focus on things i'm working on now currently which is like making sure i have good entry into the water and that my pull is really good that's just me personally i'm working on those things so having the snorkel just makes it that much easier for me to do that and that's why i use it 
with a with the so pool you use usually. it so you don't use it to necessarily well to get your body in alignment but more to like just take that out of the equation so you can focus on other things yeah 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 i mean okay and it does help align it because your your head's not moving right your head can be totally yeah. stationary so i, I guess yeah, and, in, in turn it is affecting your alignment by, yeah i mean like as as a drill it it kind of helps you understand what proper alignment looks like because you don't have to worry about like getting out of alignment for breathing which is a something you also need to work on but at least if you're working on your you know the, the your initial the body initial alignment stuff, yeah it can be helpful i mean it's been super helpful for me like i've been doing it consistently since january beginning of january and i'm already seeing seeing results i think so yeah and i would say i think that's like a great idea and then i would say just to kind of take it full circle because you do see those people who have great body position with their when their head's in the water, and then they go to take a breath, and it's like it all falls up, like yeah, their head yeah, comes totally, way yeah. out of the water. So you can take, once you get like kind of comfortable with your body alignment, maybe with the snorkel, um, I've had coaches like tell me to take a paddle and put it on my head, on the top, very top of my head, and swim with the paddle. So it's pushed, the water's mm. pushing the paddle against my head. So if you get out of alignment, the paddle's going to fly off, you know, oh, left, yeah. right. And it gives you like a little bit of bio. You can tell like when your head's coming up because the paddle will start going down. You can tell when your head's going down because hmm. the paddle will start going. That is like up. charm school. I'm going to try it. And, wow. but what you, what the cool thing is, is you incorporate your breathing. And oh. so you breathe with that paddle on your head and it really keeps you you see how much you can actually stay in alignment with breathing oh, and it's I it's hard it. but when you get it. it your breathing becomes like a non-issue like your body doesn't go out of alignment with breathing great i like that's that really what awesome. a, that's a good tip right there i'm gonna so you're putting it kind of like on your forehead almost. like a hat yeah, oh, like, like you're wearing hat. it like a hat you know and then you go oh, into okay, the water so you're saying. and you just keep pushing it forward. And it's yeah. the resistance of your swimming. Okay. Yeah. It's like a dolphin pushing a ball at sea world wow. or a tugboat Ooh. pushing a barge. There you yeah. go. Oh, there you go. Another analogy. Or Sisyphus so, pushing a rock. Um, I just like that because it, it actually gives you like a lot of micro biofeedback about your head moving, especially when you start to incorporate breathing. You're like, Oh, yeah. I can feel where I lift my head up, you know? Wow. I like that one. That's a, that's a good job. So snorkel. Can we yeah, go, go ahead, back Andy. to snorkel for a second We're for still here. myself and those who might have never seen or used a swim snorkel? What brands do you recommend? What what product works well? So I've actually used two different ones. I recently got a, a, a recently replaced mine. You might have heard me mention it. This Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps. Yeah, snorkel is by Aquasphere, I believe. It's on Amazon. It's my new favorite. I previously am using was using the finesse one, which is what I and have. These are front mount snorkels, so they actually go over your nose, like they come up, split your head in half, kind of. So you're yeah. breathing like a out unicorn the, snorkel, yeah, like a, or a narwhal, a very yeah. yeah, like a narwhal. And so it's not kind of the side like a scuba diving type snorkel type of thing. It's it's up in the front. Uh, the finesse, yeah, it's not James Bond and Thunderball style. Oh, whoa. Uh, a good, uh, good <laughs> way back. reference. Way back, yeah. John, Sean Conray, one of his later ones. Rest in peace. Uh, oh, that's true. Um, and so, yeah, I the finesse one that I had, it where the head mount attaches to your head and how it's holding the actual snorkel, it's there's too much give in there, and it flops and it wiggles. And for me, it just gets too annoying, and I can't take it. Yeah, I've, I'm finding it very annoying. I have basically the same chipper's old one essentially and it's uh it's not good so the michael phelps one doesn't have that problem yeah plus it's cool hot pink and hot and neon Ooh. green spicy, spicy matches your sea snugs <laughs> that's true it does <laughs> that are in a drawer snugs. somewhere oh they're over here <laughs> oh yeah so so i think um ankle straps is an interesting one it's kind of slightly diabolical if you're not used to them but John Stevens, who was on the show as well, I can't remember. What episode, Chris? Well, what episode? I can't remember if it was Gear Talk where he brought it up. I think it might have been Gear Talk where wearing an ankle strap kind of replaces the need of swimming in shoes. It, it sort simulates, of simulates it. the yeah. same type mm. of drag that you would get. 
Um, so that's something if you don't want to be swimming in your shoes, like being that guy at the pool, at least you can look like you're, you know, into S&M or something. I kind of love being that guy at the pool. Yeah. Uh, I would <laughs> recommend starting pairing the ankle strap with a, bu- a buoy or else yes. you will be sinking your feet. Sinking. Will be, you'll need to retile Anchor. the pool after. <laughs> and you might want to get your body alignment in check before you do that. Like that'll help totally. you not yeah, sink you don't with drown. your ankle yeah. strap. And honestly... To start with ankle strap, you could do like 25s. It's probably a good do a 25 at, you know, 70 or 80 percent their perceived effort and rest, then come back. And like doing that a couple of times, you're, you'll get your core and it will help you kind of focus on your alignment a lot. Um, they're basically giant rubber bands or you can use your old bicycle tube. Well, I was going to say, can you, because I don't use little... ankle strap, but could I just like tie a TheraBand? From yeah, my totally. dry land sure. workout around my ankles. Yeah. yeah. Or do okay. something to kind of make it so your Force. feet can't kick. Essentially yeah. I mean, is what you're sh- doing. they shouldn't be like, you shouldn't be like Joan of Arc tied to a stake or anything down there. But I mean, there should be a little bit of room, but it's the <laughs> idea is like that your feet, like you can't actually kick. Like yeah. your feet are really close together. Annie, didn't you like concoct some sort of like parachute thing coming they behind do have you? The parachutes yep. too. Drag suit. Um, you carried I, a muffin in I, it. I, carried a snack bag with a muffin and an avocado in it in okay. what kind of at, the, at the pool I, oh you know just a banana chocolate chip. like morning glory get you moving muffin oh. a lot of bran probably yep yeah nice heavy bran yeah i mean external load right muffin and avocado i, I mean that sounds in a plastic delightful. bag yeah okay. Tied to i don't ankle? exactly remember why i did that <laughs> different <laughs> okay. Different, uh, Moving on. Try, 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 try <laughs> Not stuff. everybody knows. The show's getting weird. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're diving into all sorts of things. No more ankle oh my gosh. Talk, everybody. This is just getting too curious. So there is the parachute. I have seen people. I haven't ever swam. I don't need to go any slower in the pool. So attaching a parachute to myself is not something I'm. Yeah, for like that sounds insane to me. But yeah. that is a great example of external load for someone totally. who wants and to simulating. bulletproof their swimming. And simulating what it might feel like to have a partner tied to you while you're swimming. Ooh, that's yeah. a really so good one point. time I yeah. took my dog and put him in a river rat raft, like a 999 Costco river raft. Oh, yep. And tied, um, this was like um, just getting into swimming, and tied him to my waist and went on an open water swim Ooh. with him and drug him around the Lake Washington. I think... Trista from Team Adorable. Oh, she did. Yeah, yeah. She did she that did with that her kids. Yeah, she put her kids. Yeah, in. So another way to incorporate so an, family time. There. Another way to bring your family. Yeah, yeah. Load them up. My on family's the my raft. dog. Swimming with the parachute is a good way to add extra load. I have also seen the swim team at our thing attach bungee cords to the blocks mm-hmm. and somehow attach it around their waist and then oh just swim gosh, like all out for like thirty about seconds. That. Yeah. Wait, to the blocks? Oh, to the starting blocks? Yeah, to the thing that comes out that you like. Oh, kind of like what people are doing for, um, like what people set up in their barns and in their backyards, like for swim pools. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Nice. Okay. Okay. So those are kind of some of the essential gear. Yeah, fins, if you want to, again, this helps work on drills and stuff like that. Um, Paddles. Also, a good thing with um, another coach trick that I learned if you are doing swim run and for whatever reason you don't use a pull buoy, which some people don't, um, using a paddle in one hand and a fin on the same foot, same side foot as that as the paddle hand, and learning how to do the two beat kick for endurance swimming. You guys know what I mean? About the yeah, it's like kick? the so well. It's- yeah, so it's specifically a two B yeah, kick a rather kick. than like a flutter. Like kick. it's just like a power kick to like save your legs for like long yeah, it's swims. Like, it's like every, it just it's lets like you every maintain other, your balance oh, in your body position. Like, oh like yeah, kick. it gives it gives you some power, but but that like setup with the paddle and the like, fin on one side help you coordinate because sometimes it's hard for people to like feel what that coordination is, and that gives you more biofeedback to help you coordinate like oh so this side is like, the resisted side and they go together and then this side is the unresisted side and they go together so it's if you had your a uh, 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 fin on your right leg you're gonna have a paddle on your left hand 
no fin on your right leg paddle, paddle on your, on right, your hand. right hand because you pull with your right hand and kick with your right foot at the same time oh uh, okay i got it it took well, me forever I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna to, it took me forever for to like I get about the all two this at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, it took me forever to get it because I, I was like, I don't know which leg I'm supposed to kick with which hand. But then when I did that, I could feel it happen because I had resistance on one side and no resistance on the other. And they just went together. And that's a really mm. good point about this whole thing about what these tools are good for is that they help you feel it a certain way or sort of think about it in a little bit of a different way because you're focusing on it. And that helps yeah. the things potentially click for you about like, Hey, I never thought about when your hand enters the water, it needs to go this way. But if I'm able, I'm, I'm making this up. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're if right. If your they hand goes you... in, then, you know, once you feel it, I mean, for me, it's like, oh, once it clicks, and you're like, yeah, this does feel right or this feels faster or this is more efficient then you have that correct right. memory that you can start reinforcing. Yeah, I mean, in a lot yeah, of Yeah, they give you like swimming. that intrinsic feedback where, you know, a coach can tell one, you, so. oh, your hand needs to enter the water like this. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can try to do it like cognitively or you can do it like intrinsically and feel what your hand needs to be doing. And that's way more powerful than. Yeah. And I think, I think especially in swimming, down. like you might think that you're like a great swimmer or like a great dancer or something, but then someone's looking at you and like, dude, you're like you're all kinds up, of messed man. up. It's like, I thought I looked great. <laughs> I thought I looked great on the dance floor. So like, nope. a great training tool would be using your iPhone and have someone videotape mm -hmm. you and have someone do some analysis on it. If possible, I think that yeah. could be. Yeah. There's definitely people out there to do that. Um, so that's it for pretty much the essential stuff. I think for there's things that are nice to have that would be bonus. I think um, if you have, we mentioned, you know, stretch bands or swim cords that, that you can use before swimming. Uh, sim shorts, which are sort of neoprene shorts that kind of replicate having a pool buoy. Mm -hmm. or like, like jammers, but neoprene jammers. Um you know, a kickboard if you're going to do stuff like that. And then also multiple size paddles, which is something that John Stevens also mentioned on our paddle episode where, mm -hmm. you know, it works different strength, you know, different strength, different resistance could help you get stronger and more comfortable using paddles. You guys have anything else to add to that? Just for the non-swim fin savvy, are we talking like snorkel fins or are we talking about some special pool oh, fins. Oh, they're special pool swims. Oh, they're special pool fins. They're like... um, Yeah, not big scuba diving ones. Yeah, and um, not little tiny baby yeah, ones not, either. So I think... Zoomers or whatever. Yeah, uh, Finesse makes those yeah. as well. And I think... there, There's a couple sizes. Basically, you don't want 12 inches of fin on the end of your foot. Because mm -hmm. that's... You're not really... You want something a little you're bit shorter. You're not simulating the, t the way your kick is going to... The cadence of your kick in the right. swim. Totally. And the other, the shorter ones kind of will help you a little bit more with strength and I think ankle mobility, which is always a problem for, you know. People that runners. run a lot. Yeah. yeah. I have one tool that I trialed this morning that combines swimming, running, and strength training. Whoa, and should we try to guess? Yeah, do it. Oh, swimming, running, and strength training. A jump rope. Oh, how is that for swim? Oh, I don't know. Be, yeah, shoulder uh, mobility, <laughs> wrist mobility. A seahorse? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, <well>. No way. <laughs> wow, you guessed it. <laughs> so my husband and I are obsessed with surf documentaries, and every almost every surf documentary has a scene where they are in Hawaii or Bali or some beautiful clear ocean running on the ocean floor, carrying a giant boulder. Holy. And so Whoa. this morning I brought a giant kettlebell to our pool and ran around on the pool floor with a kettlebell. Underwater or head out? Underwater. Holy smokes. So it combined like breath control. It was wow. a great glute hamstring workout because the pool has like hills you know, from shallow to deep end and, um, and so strength and running. That is awesome. What happens it when was, you have to breathe? So no, much fun. Yeah. What do you, um, you just drop the, you put you it on go. the bottom and you fly up and you oh, take yeah. a breath and then you dive back Gosh. down. 
And I was running laps back and forth That's while an everybody else shit. was swimming laps above me. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That's, uh, and they impressive. were like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> How do you get it And out I of just the told them that I'm training for the big one. Yeah. Um, awesome. I, you run it to, you run it up to the shallow end and then you just put it on the edge. That's wow. how you get it in and out of the pool. Hmm. Cause you can't, oh I gosh. tried, I tried like shooting up from the deep end with it in my hands. Oh it was about heavens. 35 That's like a good way pounds. to get a concussion. I, I tried like <laughs> shooting up with it to the surface and I couldn't make it. I didn't have enough strength. Or a hernia. But that's like my goal is to be able to shoot to the surface with it. Just be a powerful rocket ship coming out like a missile. yeah so when you, you discover should... the buried treasure at the bottom of the ocean <laughs> you guys should try it it's so much fun my husband and i are gonna do it tomorrow we can't wait i'll do it tomorrow i can't wait to <laughs> it's a ton of fun. i can't wait to hear more yeah can you take a video or something yeah sure um oh, so so i guess then i think there's some baller things you could have in terms of completely toys. unnecessary but very cool yeah i mean one thing that i i mean i want to get it but even i can't i can't justify it uh garmin makes a special swim watch it's called the swim Two watch mm. that actually has wrist-based heart rate so um some mm. of the watches underwater yeah underwater i mean some of a garmin also makes like a chest strap that's specifically for water that you can pair with some of the other watches that they have but this one specifically is like a heart rate monitor for swimming and it has does it do running too? It does do run. It does multi-sport, but it has like way more um, metrics specifically for swimming mm. that I don't even know what they are. Like SWAT. I mean, anyway, stuff that like swalt, doesn't affect swalt. me. But uh, but yeah, um, that's one thing. So and then, a really specific heart race, heart rate monitor. Yeah. For, like for, if, yeah. It's like, hey, you, you got that date ball on the out, road. Why not? I think not? they're like 300 bucks, 400 bucks, something like that. Um, and then the other thing which we mentioned at the beginning of the show is one of these fancy dry robe things. Those uh -huh. things are just money. I can't confirm. They really that are. True. I mean, I'm the only one who doesn't have one. He's, lo he's, lo he's looking at it now longingly. They're actually great for swimmer. And I, this just occurred to me. They're so spacious that most of them Probably can the fit most people plus one other person. Inside. Yeah. Well, when we were in Catalina, we're gonna take our team I mean, I first, I first really paid attention to them when we were on the boat to Catalina for the race, the two harbors. Yeah. Because Jonas Harting was standing around like a sultan in his. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like it was totally <laughs> normal to be just walking around in this. In thing. a dry robe. And yeah. And then you can, after your race, you can literally take your wetsuit and you don't have to go into the bathrooms. You can take your wetsuit and all yeah. your gear off underneath yeah. and then be warm and cozy and go get your hamburger. So I have the red original. Is that what you have too, Brooke? Yeah. I, I we looked at a lot of different brands and and went with red original. And yeah. Annie? There's red original. I have the the dry, dry robe, robe branded dry robe, okay. which is a UK based company, and they do have um, US distribution, mm -hmm. um, which will usually sell out. They have free shipping too, and they're sold out. No, they yeah, don't. They sell out real fast. A they lot have, of they have dry. they'll ship within the US if yeah until they run out, and then it's it's a bit pricey to ship it from the UK. But oh yeah, for sure. It is an awesome product. And Red and I Original think it's kind of the, the where this all started. The first these ever. are all UK because there's another brand, uh, Smock Smock or something. Smock Smock, yeah. And actually, UK. Smock Smock is um, they have and, great ethics as a company. Yeah. Their yeah. materials are more sustainable, and their product is like my dry robe. I have to carry like an extra duffel bag in order to accommodate my dry robe. It's so bulky and heavy which is awesome for when I'm wearing it and it keeps me warm, mm -hmm. but it's not very portable. The smock smock, you can kind of roll up and stuff in a backpack a lot more easily. Uh, and it's made and that was actually our deciding factor to get Red Original because you can roll up Red Original into a dry bag, but you couldn't dry. Like some woman reviewed I saw all, that same a video, British Brooke. woman. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Reviewed every single one of them. And then it was great. It was a great like pros and cons of everything out there. We'll post that one on the, on yeah. the show notes. Maybe, yeah, I, that's yeah, like I, maybe I should get a, a smock smock one just to kind of like be different. You should. Let's, yeah. let's round it, it out. And they also Compare. have, the, they have full zip, but the smock smock has, is like a, a three quarter zip three -quarter. with like a kangaroo pouch. Okay. In the front. They also mm -hmm. have a full zip one, but they kind of had this other design design that was a little bit different yeah if you're extra pervy get the full zip if you're you know more modest <laughs> but no i thought we weren't doing the naked dog walk <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think when he said pervy he was referring to you oh. <laughs> okay 
Um, so yeah, I, I really can't think of anything else from like a super fancy thing. I guess you could have your own infinity pool at your house, but <laughs> yeah, you know. sure. Or like a Vasa swim trainer. Yeah, those, yeah, I think save save your greenbacks and get stretch cords. Yeah, get stretch yeah, cords and then go steal like a piano seat from somebody, and then you can just use that as your yeah like, bench or something. Bench, yeah, go rip your bench out of the, your high school dugout. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Very now you're encouraging example. vandalism. Yeah, I guess we naked in your dry robe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, while yeah. you're naked in your dry robe. While you're being a nudist <laughs> under your under your dry robe, go vandalize yeah. your local baseball. Guys. And you could actually probably fit the bench under your dry robe. No, you don't away. do any of that. Instead, yes. go to swimmerandlabs.com uh, and read as promised our research rundown for cold water swimming, which is dropping ooh, on the same day as this podcast. Sweet. Nice. Sweet. And if you have any training tools that we missed or things that work for you, you can always send those yeah, over let us to know. us and put it in the DM. Yeah, let us know what you're doing. Whatever. Are We'd you throwing do kettlebells into the pool and running around with them on the bottom? We'd love to hear it. Do you have a smock smock? We'd love to hear it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you... Is that is that the show? That's Did we the just show. do? I was, the end. The I was gonna say, do you walk your dog nude under your dry robe? No, uh, yeah. we are <laughs> segueing we away from that. Love to hear it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> is this a normal she, thing? Chip would love to hear it. I think the FBI is listening <laughs> yeah. to this podcast now. That's oh, he just texted me. That funny show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Gear Talk with the Swim Run Labs. You can learn more about all things Swim Run at swimrunlabs.com. If you have any questions or requests for us to review on the show, send us an email at lowtideboys with a Z at gmail.com. Make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening to this and your other podcast and leave a review if you're so inclined. We'd like to thank Riding Easy Records for our show music and, of course, Annie and Brooke for sharing their wealth of knowledge with us. We'd like to give a huge shout out to our wives for letting us do this sort of stuff. And until next time, be sure to go out there and go for a swim. And then a run. And then another swim. And then a run. Might as well throw another swim on there. And a run. And then just keep going. (laughs) Okay. Don't stop. Won't stop. Can't stop. 